great and important, but not necessarily on the homepage of your website. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people aren't going to get past the top of the fold on your homepage of your website. They need help right now. And if you want, if, if they're going to read something else, it's because either you directed them to that information or they are tire kicking and they're clicking around, which is fine. They need to be educated. Um, but for that instant lead, I need your help right now. You want to keep it super simple on that homepage. I hope that helps. But anything that you want to add to your website that's educational for the consumer is super fabulous. I love it. Okay, so I'm down to email marketing. Building and nurturing an email list will, uh, to keep the audience engaged and drive repeat traffic to the website. <laughs> Excuse me, we just talked about this with regard to the newsletter. Not only do I think you should have a newsletter once a month, you're not killing people with multiple crazy emails. You're just sending them something once a month. They can unsubscribe at the bottom of the newsletter every single time if they want to. For perfect. And trust me, if they want to unsubscribe, they will, or they will send you a note, please unsubscribe me from this list. And that's fine. Okay, but let's talk about other things you can do with email marketing. When somebody comes to your website for the first time and they fill out a form or they do the little chatty thing or whatever, you're capturing their email address and having a uh, an instant email go back to them to tell them that we understand you're here. We know you, you know, you may have questions. Um, it get, reiterates what your phone number is. It tells them someone will be reaching out to them. Those are all great. But you can continue that. If this is the first time someone's come into your fray or your web, then you're going to want to tell them all the different things in a very simple way um, that you do and why home care is important and all the educational things that go along with it. Um, and I recommend a drip campaign. A drip campaign is a series of emails that go out to that newbie, that new person over the course of say 30 days. So it starts with a welcome email, tells them a little bit about you all, tells them that you hope that they'll, you know, we can connect so that we can understand more about your situation as a consumer. And then over time, it expands that email subject changes to, you know, what your specialties are or you know you know if you're a if you're a family caregiver how to you know respite care can help with stress so there's about 10 subject 10 emails one goes out every uh, three or four days over the course of 30 days that's a great way to introduce yourself and keep that person in your sites and keep you top of mind with them for the first 30 days that they inquire so if they are a tire kicker and they are researching because they've never had to deal with this before, you've got 30 days to kind of remind them that you're here and you're willing to help. Uh, also, you have to, you know, obviously call them, talk to them. After that, they should be definitely on your newsletter list. So every month they're still receiving a little something for, for from you. So those are the things I recommend uh, as far as email marketing. And you can do one-off emails. You can do a one-time you know, email blast about the Alzheimer's walk this fall and that you have a team and we'd love for them to join you. Or, you know, you can always do one-off emails every once in a while, but uh, drip campaigns are very important. Okay. I'm going to move on to SEO. Wait a minute. Gonna, oh, I got to, I got to move through this baby. All right. What actions contribute to SEO and what is SEO anyway? SEO is search engine optimization. It's something that we like to do to any website that we build and maintain um, because you have a lot of competition in your area and Google and the consumer needs to know who you are, what you're doing, what your services are, where you're located, what services, what service areas you cover. Uh, and that's a requires a lot of work and content. Google is finicky to say the least. Um, so Components of SEO are on-page SEO. So when we're building a website or we're creating content for you, we make sure that all of your keywords are in the content. We take care of what's called meta descriptions. I put that over here on the right. This is what we call a meta description. Um, the content quality is good. And we use something called advanced schema that most web developers don't do. They use some basic schema, but they don't do the advanced stuff that we do. And that is the back end nerdy stuff that Google reads. Google doesn't see how pretty your website is. It's a machine, it's a computer. And all it reads 
is the stuff behind the scenes. All it reads is the computer generated text and bits and zeros and ones. And if you don't have a good explanation of who you are, where you're located and what you do behind the scenes, Google kind of flips through it and moves on. Doesn't really, you know, it may get a few things, obviously it gets some stuff, but it may not get the whole picture and you need Google to understand your whole picture. So at the top of this page on the right, it says um, what your URL is. So if we're writing a page about senior home care, kind of a global look at what home care is for a consumer, then we're gonna title it senior home care. And we're gonna put a page title on it that matches. And we're gonna have an SEO title that matches. And we're gonna put with that, sorry, there's a little extra character there. If we're gonna put senior home care, we're gonna put the location that you're in, your main location, maybe where your office is located, and then I whited out the name of this company so you can't see it, but then we would put your company name after that. In the meta description, we want to hit certain keyword phrases. We want to make sure that we have senior home care. We have your main location. We have things like um, compassionate support, tailored home care services for your loved ones. We can even go a little bit further, but we have only 160 characters to get that message across. So these are the things that we make sure we we craft carefully so that, that they resonate well, not only with the reader, but also with Google. That's on-page SEO. Off-page SEO is, is backlink. So it's uh, other websites linking back to your website, reputable ones, never, ever, ever, ever buy backlinks. Do not do it. You're killing your website. You're killing your visibility. Um, so when we do that for our clients, we are very careful. We use mainly Google properties and some online properties that we know are reputable. Um, social signals. So you want to make sure you have that face, those Facebook posts going up there, maybe Instagram, maybe TikTok. You definitely want to have LinkedIn. Facebook and LinkedIn are your friends in the home care market. Um, and then technical SEO, um, that doesn't really give a very good description of what that is. Um, but we definitely want to make sure you have all your citations correct. So that means that a citation is your name, address, phone number, and website. So if I were to go on yellowpages.com, your yellowpages.com listing, which nobody uses or goes to, but that, that listing is exactly the same as the one that's list, as the name, address, phone number that's on your website. And that one matches the same one that's in Google. And that one matches the same one that's in care.com or caring.com or yahoo.com. They all need to match. When they are conflicting, they have the wrong address because you moved last year and didn't tell anybody, um, or they have the wrong suite number, or they have the wrong phone number, that's confusing. So we go in and um, we usually do citations for our clients to get everything in the right order. We do at least 50, I believe. Um, and then website speed, I've already talked about that. On mobile, it has to be fast. If it's not fast, you're out, you're jank store. Any questions? <laughs> we have a question back to emails. What is the best way to capture someone's email address for the email campaigns? Oh, that's great. Well, <laughs> anytime somebody fills out a form on your website, you have to make sure you put the right disclaimers in the small print, please. Uh, uh, and, but anytime somebody fills out a form on your website, um, or there might be a newsletter subscription on your website, we usually put those in the footer of the website so it's on every page. Also, the little chatty thing that we talked about, that's a great way to collect email addresses. Um, business cards, if you know someone, if you're if you're talking to someone on a regular basis and they know you, um, business cards, if you are in a local chamber of commerce, I would not just randomly upload the entire list of chamber members, but the ones that you've met, that you have a relationship with, that you've talked to, um, I always tell ladies, grab all those business cards out of the bottom of your purse, 